Okay, so hi girls and guys, a few words from the wise. Uh, so you might have heard or seen me talking about diamond paintings. <clears throat> uh, this past couple of months, I've been posting on my Facebook about them and uh, showing you the finished products. Um, it, it's got to the point now where it almost doesn't go a day where somebody doesn't inbox me or ask me on Facebook uh, what they are, where do I get them from and all that. So this is pretty much a beginner's guide to diamond paintings. Um, men that do diamond paintings were a real, real minority. I'm in a couple of groups and there's very, very few men uh, that do it. So I obviously want to encourage more men to get uh, involved with it. So what is a diamond painting? A diamond painting, they were originally invented um, for Let's say, let's say for elderly people that have done cross stitch all their lives and obviously no longer have the dexterity to do that. Uh, so somebody invented diamond painting. And diamond painting is, because sometimes when you look on uh, where, they, where they sell them, like um, 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 eBay, Amazon, they'll refer to them as, uh, they'll say diamond painting, cross stitch. Um, people get a bit confused. Uh, so basically it's paint by numbers but obviously instead of paint, it's teeny tiny, teeny weeny weeny little diamonds. Uh, plastic, but they're cut like diamonds. And what you don't see in the photographs that I share or anyone shares is when they finish and they hit the light, they, they really sparkle and glimmer and glitter. And you can't really capture that on a photograph. So you have to sort of see it for yourself. So I get asked, first question is, what are they? What, when I go on eBay or Amazon, what do I type into the search bar? Easy, diamond paintings. Um, there's a few different variants of, of what they're called. Sometimes they'll be called 5D diamond paintings, uh, but diamond paintings is pretty much what they're called. So if you type that into a search bar, diamond paintings, it'll throw some up at you. A few things to look for. Uh, a couple of things I wish I'd known. Uh, the number one thing is, a standard diamond painting is usually 30 by uh, 30 by 40. So that's slightly bigger, slightly bigger than an A4 bit of paper. So here's one I'm just using um, as an example. Uh, it doesn't say on that one. But yeah, they're normally about 30 by 40. So that's a standard size diamond painting. Um, when you're getting one that size, which is classed as a Although they are the standard ones, they're pretty small compared to sort of the, the bigger ones, but you don't need to worry about that at the moment. So when you're looking for them, and believe me, there are hundreds and thousands of fabulous ones, and if I had the money, I'd buy them all. Uh, try, and if you're doing a 30 by 40, or sometimes the square ones, the ones I started with, the 30 by 30, try and get one that hasn't got loads of detail on it. Because you've got to remember, although the diamonds are really tiny, you know, they're not going to pick up intricate details unless you're doing great, big, huge, enormous ones. So just find one that's got, you know, that, that's quite basic looking, that's not got like tiny little intricate swirls and curls, lettering as well in another one. When you're doing a 30 by 30 or a 30 by 40, try to avoid ones with lettering unless it is like the whole picture is a couple of words, because again, that detail won't show up. Uh, so yeah, try and find one that's, you know, it's quite, it's quite basic. I mean, this is a 30 by 40 um, and it's got it's got some detail in it, but not not sort of minute. I mean that you can see there's no the background never looks like the finished product. So when you get one because quite close up, that looks quite blocky uh, and you may think, oh, God, that's going to look terrible. But when you stand back from that, that actually doesn't look too bad and it's going to look a million times better once you've put your diamonds, um, once you've put your diamonds on. Um, and also try and get one uh, that doesn't have too much of the same colour in the background. Like this one, it's very, I like to go for the very colourful ones. This one's very colourful, uh, even sort of like the, the background. Uh, because if you get one with like loads of white in the background or loads of black in the background, it can get, even on a 30 by 40, it can actually get quite tedious, sort of constantly doing the same colour over and over again. But if you do get one uh, and it's got loads of white or black as the background, but you really want it because uh, you like the picture, my advice to be 
would be spend an hour because I with these smaller ones I do it colour at a time so I do all the number ones then all the number twos and all the number threes so my my advice to be if you've got one with loads of the same colour in the background do half an hour an hour of a colour uh, then do an hour of your background or do like a quarter of your background and then go back to a colour for an hour then to your background so you're not just constantly doing the same colour all the time unless you want to I mean you know everyone there's no right or wrong way people have different advice different tips so there's no right or wrong way of doing them some people sort of do it in do one like this and they'll quarter it uh, and they'll empty all the colours into 20 trays and they'll just sort of do it that way that's fine I personally like to do one colour at a time so you'll get your diamond painting uh, and it will come unfortunately it'll come rolled up and pretty flat as well I'm not going to squash it down but it'll come quite flat so wait as soon as you get it take it out and put it underneath something heavy I've got a heavy board so I put like that flat underneath the board even something even heavier on top or a couple of books some people if you've got a flat mattress put it under the mattress anything that's flat and heavy put it under that so it flattens it out because there's nothing worse than when it's all over the place and, and, and stuff because you know it's quite an intricate thing to do so another question people ask when I buy my first kit what else do I need to buy nothing uh, double check of course like you do everything you buy but with every single kit you obviously you get your diamond painting which is on a canvas and it's got the film on it uh, you get a set of diamonds okay so they all come all nicely packaged um, they all come in a nicely packaged bag so take them out and just check you've got all your all your colors so it'll all come attached together like that all in little bags like that and on each bag you've got a big number so we've got we've got 10 11 12 13 14 a bag of 20 because there's obviously a lot of even though there doesn't look to be a lot of black on this one there, there is so you've, i've got two bags so make sure you've got all your your bags of color um on each diamond painting on the side you'll have a grid like that so you'll have number and code so obviously each number represents a code and the code will normally be on the colour it's on background so I've got bag number 20 with my diamonds in it so 20 on here uh, and the code is X so I'll look at this and every single one that's got an X that's the, obviously the colour of your diamond. So you'll put your diamonds. Up. Okay, I'll, I'll say that in a minute. So with every kit, you get your canvas, all your diamonds, and you also get a little bag. And in that bag, you'll get a green ridged tray. I'll show you what the ridge is for in a minute. Uh, you'll get a little, little block of pink wax, and you'll get. A little pink pen I don't know why they're pink but they're pink in every kit all over the world they're pink again a bit later on if you're enjoying it you can buy you can buy some really fancy nice pens thicker ones ones with bent tips uh, things that flat things on the edge so you can shove your diamonds about with so you get that's what you get in your kit so a basic 30 by 30 30 by 40 kit off eBay or Amazon I'd advise you to just buy one off eBay or Amazon to start with um, you can get a decent one for about five, six pounds. Uh, and for that, you get, like I say, you know, you get your canvas, all your diamonds, your green tray, your block of wax, and your pink pen. A lot of people, and I'll be honest, when I got mine first, I was a little bit confused. So you peel off, it's got a bit of plastic each side. And what that's for, uh, I'll try and show you on here. Let me peel both sides off so that'll stick to this. And I think a lot of people make this mistake when they first get it because they don't realise. So you, you've got your little pink wax. 
you've got a pen with a little hole in it and all you do is push your pen into the wax all the way through so then you've got wax in the end of your pen and that's basically obviously what you pick your diamonds up with so sprinkle some diamonds into a tray not obviously not all of them just enough to probably cover the bottom so about that much about that many and what you do is <coughs> what I do is just gently from side to side shake it like that and it'll flip the diamonds over so that they're the right so that they're the right way round and then all you do gently touch the top of one of your diamonds like so and it'll pick it up and then you gently place it on the corresponding code on your diamond painting and repeat and keep doing that for the same colour till you run out and then move on to the next colour there on and therefore until you have a completed I've not got one with me but I've got loads of pictures that you've seen so you do that until the entire painting is uh, is covered um, you can have you can frame them a lot of people have them framed um, I cut mine out with a Stanley knife I obviously get rid of all the the white uh, border uh, some people buy colorful uh, washi tape and stick it to the to the white border uh, and then put it in the frame cut it out put it in the frame I cut mine out put them straight on the wall people that do them a lot have loads they'll cut them out and they'll put them into you can buy great big bi folder binders and you can put them into that. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Give them as gifts. But, you know, I wish I'd known about these years ago because for me personally, they are a brilliant distraction from my mental health and uh, anxiety. Uh, it's a brilliant hobby. I don't have patience for fiddly little crafts. So I'm really surprised that I've really stuck to them. <laughs> no pun intended. And a lot of people say the same thing, you know, not in oh, I ain't got the patience for it but honestly I don't know what it is but there is something really really addictive about doing it I think maybe there's lots of reasons maybe one of the reasons is is because you pretty much can't go far wrong um, and once it's you know finished and you look at it and it's absolutely incredible and you think oh my god I've done that so there's that satisfaction there obviously there's the distraction it's a great distraction technique for uh, uh, anxiety depression and it kills time as well you know uh, don't rush them um, try and obviously keep as neat as you can uh, they're, they're not if they're not perfect it doesn't matter because you know even with cross stitch you know if you look at it close up you can see it's blocky so you need to take a couple of steps back from them uh, and they look immaculate you know uh, and I, my advice would be to do one and if you enjoy it do a few more smaller ones, get a real feel for it, then get bigger and bigger and bigger, as I've done. I, uh, there's, there's, you can get square drill ones as well, uh, which are twice as difficult because you really do have to get the squares on right because if you get them wrong, it knocks the whole line, um, it uh, knocks your whole picture out of, uh, out of, out of, uh, out of sync. You know? So do a few of the... Fucking cat. So do a few of the... Sorry. Do a few of the round ones first. Get a feel for it, and if you're feeling brave enough, do some square ones, get bigger, and getting bigger ones. I'm just about to start a five piece after this big Elvis one I've done, and I've got a massive, huge, and I do mean huge, Disney one coming. Uh, and just enjoy it. You know, if you're feeling like if you've done it for a couple of hours and you feel like you're bored or it's becoming a chore, stop. Just stop, have a break. There's no rush to do them. Um, if you do rush them, obviously they're not going to be as good. So just do it, enjoy it, uh, and it is really enjoyable. It's a great, great um, hobby to have. Uh, they're quite inexpensive. Like I say, for the smaller kits, you can get them for five, six, seven pounds. And then if you do want to buy, like, like I bulk buy mine now for, through a Chinese company, so I get four or five at a time. Um, but don't worry about that for now. That, that's, just, that's just the absolute basics. Uh, so yeah, if you've got any questions, Ask, ask away. Uh, like I say, there's no right or wrong way of doing them. Uh, thing to check for when you're ordering, make sure you look for, when you type in diamond paintings, make sure you look for ones that say full drill. 
because uh, some of them will say part drill. If it's part drill, that means not that only half the painting will be diamonds and the rest will be a printed background, if you know what I mean. So if you get a full drill one, a whole thing is diamonds. Uh, the background, the picture, everything. Uh, half drill, it'll only be parts of it. Um, I don't. I personally don't like them. Uh, but some people do, you might. Uh, so it's entirely up to you. So any questions you've got, fire away. Uh, get yourself a little kit for five quid, see how you get on with it. Uh, I guarantee you'll enjoy it, even if you haven't got patience. Um, and I think that's all, all that I wanted to say, really. Uh, so yeah, happy, uh, happy diamond painting, boys and girls. Thanks for watching. Have fun. Good luck.